Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Lightroom Show, brought to you by Kelby One Online Training. My name is RC. I'm Scott, and we're going to kick things off with a tip from RC. You know, I've been watching the things that you guys have been asking to learn. We saw a lot of people asking this very thing. Now, it's on the importing of presets. So let's say you've come to our Lightroom Killer Tips website, and you download a preset that we give you for free. How do you install it? How do, yeah. you, how do you work with it? We, we've been asked that so many times. It's very easy for you to do. So here I have a picture. I'm in the develop module right here. You'll notice that you have a section right here on the left-hand side that says user presets. All you have to do here is just do a right click. You'll notice that you have an option now at the bottom called import. Click on that. And once you find the one that you want, and I've created a preset, preset called Selenium 2. Once you import that, it'll import it and apply it at the same time. So. At any point in time, if you need to be able to see those presets, you'll see that they're right here inside of the user preset section in the develop module. It's not super obvious, but it's super easy. It's one of those things where it's like, if you don't know it, if you don't know it, you don't know it. <laughs> so, All right. Now, so, what do you have? I got a thing on organization. Okay. Now, we have entire classes on Kelby One on organization, so mm -hmm. I'm only going to be able to cover a little bit of it here, but I want to kind of give you um, what I'm using for organization. So there are a lot of different ways to organize your images. There is no official way. So all I can show you is here's how I organize mine. So let me show you what I use. Uh, the whole thing is actually based on collection sets. So if I'm doing any kind of project, a portrait shoot, in the case example we're gonna do here, a wedding, the very first thing I do is create a collection set and subsets inside of that. So let's go and start by going to the collections panel. We're gonna go to create a collection set and we're gonna call this Smith Wedding. All right, so once we create this main collection set, everything I do is gonna go inside that. So I know that there's gonna be a certain number of things that I'm gonna to need to create for a typical wedding. So I'm gonna go create another collection set, all right? And this one would be called, uh, let's say, Before Ceremony, all right? Now, that new collection set has to go inside the one I just did. Right, and this will all make sense when you see the end of it. But everything I create from now on has to go inside this one big Smith wedding folder. Mm -hmm. Now you'll notice that I only have one collection, so <laughs> it automatically defaults to that. But if you have a whole bunch more, you'll have to choose it from here. Right. We create, create. So that's the before ceremony shots. Then I'm gonna create another collection set. This one would be called the, maybe the processional. All right, that goes inside Smith wedding. Okay. All right, I create another collection set. This one might be called Ceremony. That goes inside Smith's Smith Wedding. wedding. <laughs> it gets old. All right, we'll do a couple more just real quick. This one would be called Formals. That goes inside. Smith Wedding. Smith Wedding. <laughs> Let's do another one. Let's, let's, I won't do so many. Here we go, Reception. And that goes inside. Uh, I'm going to say Smith Wedding. No. <laughs> yes, it does. It goes inside Smith Wedding. All right, so now that I have these done, and I pretty much know. Now you gotta realize, you can break this out a lot further. You can go to, you can break things down to like toasts and speeches and cutting the cake and all that. You can break it down into as many things as you want, but after a while, the organization starts to become a liability. So I try to keep it short and sweet. Uh, five or six collection sets is all I, I, I would use, but I know that there's people that wanna break a wedding down into every little micro unit. Mm -hmm. I really think this is one of those things where less is more, but you will have to do it to which, however you feel. I'm gonna show you how I do it. All right, next, let's go to our previous import. And now, what I would do is, I'm gonna make uh, collections based on the ones that I think I might use actually, like these are kinda in the running shots. So right. if I see one I like, I go, okay, that one's okay, I'm gonna mark it as a pick. I press the letter P. Then I'll look at another image and maybe another one, okay, I like that, I like that. I'm skipping that because I already have a shot like it. We'll keep that one, we'll keep that one. These are all before the ceremony shots here, right? So I'm just shooting these. When I get you know, through and I see the ones that I like from just before the ceremony, I'm gonna hit the little filter down here, turn on the pick flag, and then all of these are in the running. These aren't the final images, these aren't going in the wedding book, but at least they're in the running. Right. So at this point, I'm gonna create a new collection. Now you can either go create collection or just press Command N on Mac or Control N on PC, and I would call these picks. Now this is what's important. These are only picks for the before the ceremony, so they go inside a collection set called before, before the ceremony. ceremony. So watch what happens when I hit create. Now my picks, so these are the ones that are in the running. Let's say I took 
600 shots before the ceremony. Mm -hmm. But only these are, are in the running. Now, I would take it one step further. Now, I'm not gonna put all of these shots perhaps in the book. I've gotta figure out which ones I do want. So what I do is uh, I select all and I press the letter U. That unmarks all the, all the picks. I don't really need to see the picks, and, right. or I can just turn off the pick flag either way, but I don't need to mark them as picks anymore. They're right. already in a folder called picks. Right. <laughs> I know they're picks. What that allows me to do is to do picks again. So now I want to find out which ones are actually going to go in. Now, it may be the client that picks them or me that picks them, but I'll say I want this one and I want that one and a third one. These three are going to go in the actual wedding album. These are no longer in the running. These are the selects. These are finals. Right. So I would take just those three images. Now here I can just see which ones are picks. I can just select them or use the pick filter, right? And I'll create one more, one more set. Create collection set selects. Now, you can use finals, for wedding book, any word you want, I always use the word selects, but it still has to go in the same before the ceremony. So let's take a look, oops, I actually created a collection set. That was dumb. I actually meant to just create a collection. collection. All right, it goes in before ceremony. Now, here's what we've done. So just so you know that, <laughs> I like the way I named the collection. Now, what, what yeah. happened in this, something, something like that? No, no problem. I'm going to go hit rename. <laughs> I right click and go choose rename. Do you that know how many times be... people have asked about that? They'll <laughs> delete collections and they'll do stuff. And I'm yeah, like, I know. just right click just on it. Just right click and rename it. So right. this, is, this is a little more tutorial than I expected. We'll hit rename. There we go. So this is what I will see for all five of these categories. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see the ones that were in the running. I'm going to see the ones that actually go in the book. Right, And then I can go to the next one. In ceremony, I would see the picks, I would see the selects. When I go to finals, so it's a very, very easy way for me to know exactly where my images are mm -hmm. and know which ones were in the running mm -hmm. and which ones actually make the book. I think it's, I think it's brilliant. A lot, a lot of that kind of stuff, because you could have, in the before ceremonies, you could have picks that have been picked for the bride, picks that the mom wants, picks that the dads want. Right, and color labels for that. Exactly. So right. in that, now you're using this a little bit smarter when you're working inside of Lightroom. Right. So let's say that, that the, the, the bride's mom wants this one and this one instead. Right. Well, then you just hit the number six and they get a red label. Brilliant. Then you can say the groom's mom and dad, like they preferred this one and this one, they get a seven. And then you can, so everybody has their own little different way of knowing for you to know these, These are, are mine, pretty. those are the bride and groom's parents, I mean, those are the bride's parents, these are the groom's parents. There's all kinds of ways to break it down. Perfect. But that's, my, that's the basic way I handle literally anything. If it's a football game, I create a collection set, and it's got pregame, first half, second half, finals. Nice, nice, or nice, nice. Select. Now, hey, I got a quick and easy one right here. All right. Take a look. If you're working inside of any of these panels, right, you'll notice that when I click on history, History is the only thing that comes up. If I go to presets, that's the only thing that comes up. Sometimes, I want to be able to access all of these things. Easiest way for you to do it, right click. You'll see that there's an option right here called expand all. So like that, and now all of them are open. Perhaps you might want to move something from one section to another section, or you might want to apply a preset as you're going through collections. This is a great way for you to do that. You know what I like about that tip? What's that? It doesn't take you out of solo mode. Mm -hmm. It just says, here, you want to see them all right now? You can expand all. Right. If you want to tuck them all away, if you right click again, you can do expand all. Oh, yeah, here. I mean, excuse me, collapse all or expand all. Right. So now, and do this, collapse all, whoop, but you're still in solo mode. So now when you switch, you're right back to it. Beauty, eh? So <laughs> let's take a quick break. When we come back, we've got a couple more things that we want to talk to you about right here on the Lightroom Show. Wait, Greg, do you see that? Yeah, Ren. What, what tracks are those? I don't know. Um, these look like moose tracks. Moose? In Africa? The station says fresh tracks of a moose heading east from first turn in Piccadilly towards Fred Street. Greg, keep a lookout for fresh scat out here. Brendan, I don't know what a scat looks like. Station tracks of the moose, look to head east. 
Moose is in Africa. <laughs> hey, we are back with the Lightroom Show. Hey, listen, you're going to be on the road. I am, I'm on the road. <laughs> road. So make sure you go to kelby1.com slash live. You can see the Shoot Like a Pro Reloaded Tour with Scott Kelby. You're going to be going to Salt Lake City April 13th and yeah. L.A. on the 15th. Yeah, come see me live. I'm going to be uh, teaching all kinds of crazy stuff, including a little bit of Lightroom. Ah, well, you're going to be doing the... I got seven my, point. I got my brand new seven point system for Lightroom, <laughs> so I hope you'll go check it out. Cool. Hey, I want to talk about some Lightroom Mobile, if we can. Um, right so uh, Adobe made a change, and we talked about this... Um, last in, in some of the last shows about right. some of the new things they added to the latest version but the thing that's missing is now the slideshow options are hidden okay. in fact there is really there's no word that says slideshow anymore so i want to kind of show you where it's at now and where to find the options because there actually are options it's all it's all a little hidden. All okay. right, let's take a look here. We're in Lightroom Mobile, and we have a collection here. Let's go ahead and just tap on the collection. And if you look up in the right-hand corner now, there is this little, it's a U-shape with an arrow. If you tap right up in that corner, it brings down all these uh, options. And Slideshow isn't one of them. Instead, it's called Present. Now, if you remember from earlier shows, the Present mode was for you to be able to hand your tablet to somebody, let them look on their own through your images without accidentally doing a rating Smart. or deleting a file or going to the develop module. It was a safe way to you go, here, look at my images. Right. But present mode has the hidden feature. Let's go ahead and choose present. And now that we're in present mode, look what happens. Where that little U shape was up in the corner, it's mm -hmm. now a play button. And now when you hit play, it starts a self-running slideshow. Ah. If you tap back up there again, see the three dots to the left of it? Look. Slideshow options. You can choose whether to have a crossfade, a wipe, or flip, and there is a slider you can drag with your hand to basically for the slide duration. So you have control over which transitions it uses, what the slide durations are, and it's all just a little hidden, and that's why I wanted to make sure that you guys knew where it was. There are slideshows, and you do have options, but it's all kind of hidden under the new present mode. Perfect, 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 perfect. Now listen, I'm gonna do one more quick tip while okay. we're here. Sure. Uh, and it all has to deal with zooming and kind of moving around inside of Lightroom. So you'll see that we have a picture here. If you hit the space bar, you'll automatically be brought into a one-to-one -one preview. That has a lot to do with where you are over here inside of the navigator section. So right now, it's set to one-to-one. -to -one. That's default. You have the option, though, however, to come over here and change an individual zoom le level. So let's just say that I wanted to go three-to-one. I don't know why, but let's just <laughs> say that that's what I want. Right? If I hit the space bar again, it zooms out. What I like about this is that if you hit the space bar again, it brings you it right does. back to that zoom level. Now, there's a hand right here in this one section. So I'm gonna move over here to around the goatee, hit the space bar out, back in, brings me right and back to that one area. And it remembers your last zoom level, that's very handy. So that I think is pretty cool. So you can, not only can you specify the zoom, but you can go to an individual area, zoom out and in, get right back to it, and it's toggling between fit and that custom zoom percentage. If you want to see more, you can go ahead and switch that. If you want to see less, you can switch it right at the top of the navigator. Very nice. Thank now, you. Thank you, thank light, you. we're a Lightroom show, but we of are course, the people show. that use Lightroom are photographers, so we like to feature a photographer each show for you guys to check out. Who do you got, Arcee? I've got Adrian Sommeling. Adrian is a person who does some incredible composites, right? I, I'm a big fan of his work. I think he does very, very well. He's out of the Netherlands. Make sure that you take a look at him over at adriansommeling.com. I met him. I met Did him. you? Yeah, I met him when I was in Dubai. Yeah, absolutely. He does some really amazing stuff. He starts with a photograph, of course, and then creates these amazing composites right where like his kids taking a <laughs> taking off on the yeah. i'm like huh, pretty cool no no he's very 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 talented so uh, all right so we're going to add a little bonus thing at the end here so um we just expanded our kelby one offices in our studios so we have a little three minute tour for you guys it's just a little bonus thing we're throwing here at the end uh to kind of let you see where we are where we work where all the gang is so um 
take a look at that. Also, just want to remind you guys, we have a ton of full-length classes that we do on Lightroom. We have a ton of them, a lot of them from myself, from RC, from Matt Kluskowski, and a bunch of guest instructors. So if you really want to dive deep into Lightroom and go further than the 12 or so minutes we get to do here, uh, please go check out kelbyone.com. Uh, you can get access to all of our classes unlimited for $19.95 a month. So we hope to check that out, and we hope to see you guys next week right here on The Lightroom Show. Take care. Take care, everybody. All right, guys. Hey, everyone. This is Mia, as you can see. In the reflection of the outside of our studios here, I am outfitted with a couple of GoPros to give you a tour of the Kelby One studio. Now, let me remind you, this is a working studio. So, nobody in here knows that we're about to do this. You're going to get some odd looks, but still, it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go. of Kelby One, and you enjoy exploring the rest of our site. I'm Mia. Bye!